Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, American version. Michael Blomqvist is hired by the aging leader of the Wanger concern to solve a 40-year-old disappearing case. A young woman, Harriet, disappeared and her father desperately wants to know what happened before he dies. Blomqvist has had a bit of legal trouble because he was tried and convicted of writing an article of lies. I don't remember the exact legal term. So he just has something to gain. In fact, he's promised to he's promised aid in bringing down the man who seemingly falsely brought him down on these charges. He is aided by the young goth hacker Lisbeth Salander. There is a lot to cover on this film, so I will try to get the vital stuff out of the way. While I am not usually a fan of American movie versions, of movies that have already been done in other countries, you know, when they are taking an original and doing it again. This is not a remake, however. This is not... This is an American adaptation of the novel. If you... There are similarities between the two movies, but this gets stuff from the book, as far as I understand, I haven't read it, that the Swedish one doesn't. And this is critical stuff. This is actually really important and really adds to the overall. So... I do like American films, but I don't tend to prefer them when there is also, uh, you know, a foreign original or a foreign version that came first. But in this case, the American version, I gotta say, is just better in many respects. In some respects, it is lesser, but those are not terribly egregious and or there just aren't as many of them. Rooney Mara is Lisbeth Salander. I, I really didn't think I was ever going to hear myself say that, especially after watching, you know, Nomi Rapace a full four days ago. But she blew me away, and Rooney Mara now blew me away even more. She's got the, the essence down. The Mara... Salander is a far more interesting character than the Rapace. And I actually didn't... I've, excuse me, only watched Mara in, you know, two movies, including this one. And after watching her in A Nightmare on Elm Street, I'm just glad that the girl can actually stay awake after the camera has been turned on. I just started to worry that she had some kind of condition where she fall asleep when you know, the record button was pressed, but the girl has talent. The mannerisms are just... she's got them down to a T. After watching the first movie of the Swedish trilogy, I read online that Salander is supposed to maybe be an Asperger, or at least have aspects of Asperger's Syndrome. I didn't get that from the Swedish movies. If I had watched this movie not knowing that she was supposed to be at least partially an Asperger's, I would have said this girl has aspects of Asperger's. It's, it's definitely there. If you know aspects of Asperger's, if you know someone who has Asperger's, you're going to recognize it in this girl. And it's not because it's hammered home. It's because they understand it. They clearly get what 
you know, people with this condition are like, and it comes so naturally to this character. The, we, we get more into her world, and more, much more of an emotional connection to her. And this one doesn't even give that much information about her past. Blomqvist is also more interesting. He's got more character to him. He's got a little bit of, I don't know if attitude is the right word, but he just, he has personality. And in the Swedish movies, he's kind of a blank slate. He's just the hero, you know, a little bit too bland, really. This is better produced, which is, you know, it's obvious, this is a larger scale production, but it really does make a difference, you know, and it's not just, it's prettier, it's actually surprisingly not terribly flashy, but it just, it, it has a stronger impact, it really, really gets to you. It has a richness of detail that the Swedish one really lacked. I, when I watched the Swedish film, I felt like it got into a lot, or a lot happened in those two hours and 20 minutes. This movie is maybe 15 minutes longer, 10 or 15 minutes longer. And I actually felt like it lingered on scenes that, you know, scenes that were shorter in the Swedish version, or, you know, long enough in the Swedish version, they seemed longer in this, not in a bad way. I mean, like, you just more got the, I'm talking about the nasty scenes, and people who know the story know what I'm talking about here. This one lingers more on them, so you get more of how just disturbing and unpleasant this story really is. But, it, at the same time, manages to fit in far more and really have all of it work. I can't think of anything in this movie that is like set up and doesn't work. The, there are more characters and they're actually more interesting. You know, some of them are just as interesting as they are in the Swedish. I can't really think of any that are less interesting, although there might be some that aren't quite as heavily featured. But again, not as big a deal as, you know, there are more characters. There is... Blomqvist has a daughter. I didn't know that when I watched the Swedish movies. I... yeah. And she, while she has a small role, she actually has a quite pivotal one. And her ha... you know, his, his having a daughter really adds to the emotional trauma of working on this case. Because there is this... A horrible feeling of could something like this happen to my little girl you know and that just it makes it more universal this kind of suffering you know both you know these movies are very much about as the original title suggests and I have no idea why they changed this but men who hate women you know men of authority who abuse women or girls and get away with it because they have this authority and you know and it really just it, it has this kind of it could happen to anyone any female any girl and I would hope almost anyone on this planet has at least one woman that they care deeply about the the mystery is quite good and I th I feel like this does a better job of allowing us into it. Which is not to say that the Swedish version didn't let us try to piece it together for ourselves, but it did feel a bit more scattered and more difficult to get a full overview of. Over the course of the Swedish film, excuse me, I got an overview of what was, you know, the situations relating to when Harriet was last seen. In this one, and some are gonna say that this is Hollywood, and maybe it is, but I feel it's helpful. They actually 
talk you through it. They say, you know, then this happened, then that happened. And this doesn't take very long, and it doesn't... I mean, if you, without knowing, you know, things going into this movie, if you don't already know the story, and you just watch this movie, and you, after they've explained the the events that are, you know, commonly known to the people in the story about what happened the day, you know, the last day she was seen. You might just be Sherlock Holmes. With that said, I do think there are some hints in this, in this film of what is really going on, and I don't know, I have just watched the Swedish original, so the story's fresh in my mind. I don't know if you would be able to piece it together. If you don't already know it, I would hope that it's just like when, after you've watched the entire film, you're going to look back and say, oh, that really meant that, you know. The, the Swedish film has the isolation of, you know, you really feel like you're out on just out in the middle of nowhere in Sweden. This one does not have that, however, it does have the cold. The reason it doesn't have the isolation so much is because Salander actually travels to different, you know, investigating different cases that might relate to the disappearance. She travels to different police stations, and this just kind of takes away, obviously, from, you know, you're stuck in the middle of nowhere. But it really does have the cold. You really feel like they are just practically freezing to death, even when inside. The dialogue is great. There are some, you know, really good exchanges. You can really tell this is a Fincher film. There... The opening sequence kind of reminded me of the opening sequence of Fight Club, and I'm not sure it really should, but it just, it's this animated, sort of abstract kind of thing with really strong music over it, you know, it's like, it, it doesn't just... It's not undertones, it's overtones, you know, it is bashing your head in audio, with, with audio, you know. And that's a good thing, you know. <laughs> this movie is not meant to just ease its way in. No, no, it's going to come in and beat you with brass knuckles. And that's just the way it is. And, the you know, the opening credit sequence really should convey that. You know, if the opening credits of a film should help convey what the film is going to be. And this really does that. And it's also just, it's morbidly beautiful in... I, I, I will not give details about it. I, it. You should see it for yourself. The, the, the whole procedural stuff of the film, parts of it feel like Zodiac. And, I don't know, I, I think there's, you know, mixed opinions about Zodiac. If you want it to be just not flashy, but straightforward, we are solving a crime. It takes time, and there's, there are things to look at, and, you know, there are things that... You know, not absolutely everything is going to lead to the final conclusion and such. If you like that, then, you know, that's what we have here. And, again, this is really not, you know, supposed to be that flashy or attention-grabbing. It, it, it isn't, you know, it's not Panic Room. It's not trying to wow you with visuals, while at the same time the cinematography is excellent. The ending is fantastic. I did not like the ending of the Swedish version, and yeah, this one, they got it right. It, it just really, 
as it ended and the ending credits rolled, I thought back to the text in the trailer. The Feel Bad Movie of Christmas. And yeah, yeah, it lives up to that very much so. In closing, brutal, sexually perverted, disturbing, violent, grotesque, a good mystery, interesting characters, good acting, really gripping. It feels like a novel adaptation in the good way. It feels like someone really put a lot of effort into building this piece of fiction, not just not just writing, but crafting something where you can you can dig deep, you can look at it from different angles, and it's going to hold up. This is not something someone just wrote for the heck of it. This is something someone put a lot of effort into making sure it s stood up. It's credible, it's realistic, it's intense. By which I mean it has scenes of great tension, not that it constantly rushes past. It has a gradual pace. But at the same time, I wouldn't say that I was ever bored. It just doesn't always, you know, not everything, not absolutely everything moves plot along. Some scenes are just there for, you know, character. Again, Salander, far more interesting character in this. We actually see her former legal guardian and how much she cares for the guy. And yeah. Tragic, and I'm gonna stop talking now because I've gone on for far too long. I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.